Coming up, COVID-19 didn't stop Hawkeyes from dancing for the kids. And later, like college students, Iowa lawmakers want in-person graduation. DITV politics reporter Lauren Johnson has details later in the newsroom. The men's track and field team dominate in the Big Ten. I'll tell you more in sports. Spring weather is right around the corner, Hawkeyes. I've got this week covered in weather. All that and more coming up on this Monday morning edition of DITV News. Don't go anywhere. DITV News starts right now. Good morning and thank you for tuning in. I'm Bailey Chihan. COVID-19 did not stop University of Iowa's 27th dance marathon this year. The 24-hour event had an assortment of activities from a car parade to a dance session over Zoom with DJs and UI students and even head shaving at a local salon. Because in-person events could not be held this year, Dance Marathon had to come up with new ways to raise money. Members sold crafts, collected pop cans, and asked their entire friends list on Snapchat to donate money. Dance Marathon raised just over $1.4 million this year. And in a survey conducted in the fall, 72% of responses said they were fine without in-person dining. Despite this, University Housing and Dining reopens in-person dining today. DITV News reporter Ashley Wheel is at a dining hall with more. I am here outside of Burge Dining Hall because today is the first day that in-person dining is back. Students still have the option to take their food to go if they don't feel comfortable eating inside the dining hall or wish to take their food somewhere else. Dining Hall's staff will be wiping down each table after every customer to ensure safety and COVID-19 protocol. Students will still have to make a reservation online as well as wearing masks when entering the dining hall and not actively eating. All three dining halls will be open today, each allowing around 200 to 300 students each. Thanks, Ashley. Let's toss it to Katie in the weather studio to find out if the sun will stay in the week ahead. After a cold snap a few weeks ago, Iowa City is warming up, and it looks like it will stay that way. Today will be mostly sunny, and we will see a high of 36 and a low of 17. At the beginning of the week, it will be sunny, and temperatures will reach up to low 50s, and at night will drop into the high 20s. At the end of the week, we will see some cloudy skies and some light winds. If you're wanting to enjoy the sun, now is your time to do it, Hawkeyes. Back to you, Bailey. Thank you, Katie. Today marks the opening of GuideLink Center, which provides immediate care for those who are 18 and over and experiencing a mental health or substance use crisis. DITV News reporter Isabel Tussel has all the details. With COVID-19's nationwide lockdown nearing its one-year mark this month and the transition to online school, students have experienced decline in mental health. The new GuideLink Center in Iowa City offers urgent mental health and substance use care. Anybody can walk through that door, a student, an individual in Iowa City surrounding areas, someone from out of town. I mean, it's an access center. That's what it's all about. The center had a soft opening on February 15th with partial services available. GuideLink started out with two mental health services services, crisis stabilization, and crisis observation. Substance abuse services, including the detox and sobering unit, will be available March 1st. The staff is committed to following up with patients even after they have left the center. We have had lots of conversations with like the Department of Student Life within the university. and We've got a great relationship with them. And so certainly um, if there's ways that we can get students the help they need um, after they leave GuideLink, We'll have those connections to university resources. I visited GuideLink a few days before its soft opening, where Governor Kim Reynolds made a comment about the center. This really should be a big celebration because this is incredible and it is a true role model um, for other areas of the state and region to take a look at. The GuideLink Center is officially open for business. Visit guidelinkcenter.org for more information. From the University of Iowa, Isabel Tussel, DITV. Iowa Student Action kicked off their fight for a tuition freeze Thursday evening over Zoom. Students met from all over the state to share why free college education would impact their life for the better. Uh, we need a permanent tuition freeze. We've been fighting for the reversal of the multi-year tuition model for years. And um, now that we've seen that they can freeze tuition, <laughs> they just don't want to. ISA believes education is a right and that keeping it from lower income students does nothing but promote inequality. 
getting a college degree in the United States is like the number one factor in um, socioeconomic mobility and to kind of gatekeep the opportunity uh, to kind of grow up in that standing, uh, to have the opportunities to get a better life uh, uh, is just not right. In addition to a tuition freeze, Iowa Student Action aims to cancel student debt, and they hope to free students and their families from financial struggles. On Friday, Representative Bobby Kaufman proposed a bill regarding college graduation. We have DITV politics reporter Lauren Johnson in the newsroom. Lauren, what has Representative Kaufman proposed? Well, Bailey, Representative Kaufman's proposed bill would require in-person graduation at all three of Iowa's public universities. It also seeks to require a minimum of two guests per student that's graduating. Iowa had originally announced that they were planning on a virtual commencement, but um, the regions have said that they will follow this bill if it passes the Iowa legislature. Iowa does say that this is not a lot of time to plan in-person um, so celebrations considering in, um, commencement is in May and we are just getting this bill in late February, early March. And can you tell us about a bill regarding transgender rights and locker rooms? Yes, a bill to force transgender students to use bathrooms and locker rooms that align with their birth gender instead of the gender that they present as was recently proposed in the House last month. Um, this bill has faced opposition because transgender people have been victims of violence when forced to use bathrooms that don't necessarily align with what their gender presentation is. And this bill is expected to die in committee, um, which means that it will not be um, brought back to the floor, um, where a bill is typically pr um, proposed on the floor and then it goes to committee for further debates and it is not expected to get past that stage. Back to you, Bailey. Thanks, Lauren. And I heard that men's track had a good weekend. Tiana, take me to the races. Well, Bailey, I can't take you there, but I can tell you what went down. The University of Iowa men's track and field broke the school record Saturday, scoring 119 points. This sealed the win for the Hawks and crowned them champions of the 2021 Big Ten Indoor Track and Field Championships. Although the women finished in third place, they are hopeful for better luck going into the outdoor season. The men's team has not won the indoor championship since 1929. The record-breaking win was a team effort with athletes scoring points in every event. The Hawks traveled to Arkansas on March 12th for the NCAA Indoor National Championships. Although college sports have been back in action, student athletes are battling more than just their opponents. DITV sports reporter Destiny Cook found out how Iowa student athletes are facing mental health issues. Despite the pandemic, student athletes have gotten that sense of normalcy again playing the sports they love. But the pressures of COVID-19 have made their seasons anything but normal. And student athlete mental health concerns are increasing more than ever before. We don't have the normal you know, balance of our lives that we usually do. Um, and, and while being concerned about not getting COVID and trying to be you know, as healthy as you can be, and it's, it's definitely been, you know, a different year than any other for, you know, all of us. Just this past year, the NCAA reported student athletes having higher rates of depression, anxiety, and mental exhaustion. And these athletes are not only facing mental health adversities within their sport, but in their academics as well. The most difficult challenges are coming with academics and having almost all online classes has been really difficult. And sports psychologists from the Iowa Athletics Department are also learning the impacts a cram game schedule is having on student athletes health. To be in that competition mode which gets you excited, gets your adrenaline pumping, right, get, gets all of that going. But to do that like multiple times in a weekend it really that takes a toll on your mind and your body. This new normal hasn't been easy for Hawkeye athletes, but they continue to make mental health their top priority through this unprecedented season. From the University of Iowa, I'm Destiny Cook, DITV Sports. After an up and down off season, Hawkeye baseball is back. DITV Sports reporter Michael Merrick has more on how the black and gold feel about this new start. After a very long and complicated offseason, Hawkeye baseball is back and ready for action. The team has had a few COVID hiccups, but this group of guys are closer than ever. We've had to do a lot of stuff on our own. We've had a lot of, you know, practices where the coaches couldn't be there. A lot of guys had to work out by themselves, but 
I really think we have a good group of captains that have done a great job of, you know, keeping us on track and, you know, just keep reminding us of our end goal. So, I mean, I don't think that COVID or anything like that has been really an issue for us. After being put on pause just a few weeks ago, the Hawkeyes are still very confident in their off-season training and aren't making any excuses. I think as for season coming up, I think it's a great opportunity for us to go right into Big Ten as I think we've prepared well enough to where we're going to be a top contender in the, in the league this year. The Hawks will only play conference games, making this possibly the hardest schedule in Iowa baseball history. With the season starting March 6th, we will be sure to keep you up to date with your Hawkeyes. From Iowa City, Iowa, Michael Merrick, DITV. Our ninth ranked men's basketball team crushed the number four Ohio State Buckeyes yesterday. The final score was 73 to 57. Jordan Bohannon had a record breaking game. It took j five assists to break the program's all time assist record. The record was previously held by Jeff Horner who had 612 assists. Bohannon now holds the record with 615. Luca Garza had 24 points and put up his 11th double double of the season. The Hawks return to Carver Hawkeye Arena to take on the Nebraska Cornhuskers this Thursday at 8 p.m. Bailey, back to you. Thanks, Tiana. COVID-19 has changed the routes for students to get honors credit. Research has always been a way for students to earn honors credit with about 80% of honors students participating. But this year, with many labs closed due to COVID-19, the program had to get creative. We created a, a summer research project where we allowed students to do research online without a UI professor, although we did require them to use a, a UI library liaison. With student experience always the focus of the program's mission, they decided to alter some of the guidelines for participation. This includes relaxed requirements for grades and GPAs and the chance to opt into pass-fail classes and still get credit for honors. So what we've tried to do in general is look to see where students are being disadvantaged by the pandemic in whatever way, and to make sure that we are giving room for the, the, the additional stress, especially of, of the pandemic, what that's created. The number of students in honors has gone down over the past year, but it's unclear how much of that is due to university enrollment numbers decreasing. The honors program updated policies and procedures for the pandemic on their website and hopes to continue accommodating students as they work through this difficult time. And finally, today kicks off Women's History Month. Over the next few weeks, the Daily Iowan and DITV will be highlighting women from the University of Iowa that have made and are continuing to make an impact. Tune into our social media show, DITV Now, or a copy of The Daily Iowan for information on these pioneering women. I'd also like to celebrate the hardworking women who worked behind the scenes of this episode of DITV. Harley Atchison, Catherine Raver, Isabel Tussel, Elizabeth Neruda, Julia Richards, Mallory Wilson, Ashley Wheel, and of course, Tiana Torjohn, Katie Wadman, Lauren Johnson, Nikki Linderholm, and Angie Looney. Thank you for tuning in to DITV News. Head over to dailyiowan.com for all the latest headlines coming out of the Daily Iowa Newsroom. Tune in to our bite-sized news update, DITV Now, tomorrow for a flash update on all of Iowa City and Hawkeye sports news. For DITV News, I'm Bailey Chihon. Have a great day.